Let me begin with a story. A long time ago, there was an artisan in the streets of Baghdad. He was an expert in making jewelry. The artisan was famous for making the most popular pieces on the market. Whether it was a necklace or an earring, he would always sell better than everyone else and left his rivals wondering about his secret. To find out his secret, let's look at his shop. Here is how he does it. He has a collection of earrings, and say the one on the top left corner is currently selling well. The artisan's strategy is to make more copies of the pieces that sell best, and fewer of the pieces that sell less successfully. There are three principles that the artisan's strategy relies on. First, he has a lot of different designs, so he can find out the design that is liked best. If he had only one design, he could easily have gone broke, because if the design wasn't popular, he couldn't sell any. Second, the artisan must be able to make more pieces. And third, he must somewhat conserve the design so that the customers still like it. Of course, he could sometimes change the best-selling design a little to create more variety, as you see in the bottom right. Remember, the three properties that were important here are that there is a variety of choices, new copies are made after each sale, and the copies inherit most of their properties from the original design. The contents of the shop change over time, and we can say that the jewelry evolves to fit the customer's taste. A similar process was first observed in nature by Darwin and Wallace more than 150 years ago. It is called natural selection. In nature, however, things are not bought and sold. Instead, the currency is what biologists call fitness. Not quite the fitness you see at the gym, but here a fit individual is someone that can have more surviving children. Individuals with greater fitness are more likely to survive and have children, so they are represented more in the population as time goes by. To understand this better, let's look at an example. This white mouse lives in the desert and is preyed upon by vultures and eagles. The white color of its fur makes it easy to spot by the vulture. This is controlled by a gene, but even small, although rare changes in the gene when they are passed on to the offspring can make the fur color change. In this environment, because the background is brown, a brown fur would protect the mouse from the eyes of the predator. In this case, we say that the brown fur gives a fitness advantage to the mouse. Let's look at what happens here. Starting from a white father, the brown baby mouse is much more likely to survive than his white siblings. The white mice are more often preyed upon by the eagle because they are conspicuous. After a few generations, there are many more surviving brown mice than white mice because natural selection has caused the mouse population to adapt to the environment. Going back to the properties we learned before, the variation here is created by the changes in genes that create the two colors. The inheritance means white mice make mostly white offspring and brown mice make mostly brown offspring. Producing offspring already satisfies multiplication. Although predation can be a drive for selection, as we saw in the mouse example, it is not the only cause. As you may know, the male peacock has a very large, embellished tail with no apparent use in its daily life. Why is this? Well, the peacock lady you see on the left tends to be very, very picky about the gentleman she decides to mate with. Therefore, male peacocks must be very good at convincing her to mate. This is where the tail is useful. It makes them more attractive. But the tail didn't appear overnight. At one point, peacocks had tails similar to those of chickens or turkeys, like the male on the top right. However, maybe those peacocks with a slightly more embellished tail managed to win over more ladies, and therefore left more children in the next generation. Once again, even among the new generation, the ladies preferred the males with even prettier and more spectacular tails, which means a larger tail can provide a better fitness for the guys. Through natural selection, over thousands or even millions of years, the male peacock's tail became more and more spectacular, just to attract the picky ladies. So in conclusion, natural selection is one of the most important forces in evolution. By this process, the fitter individuals are more likely to survive and reproduce. Hope you enjoyed the video, and see where you can find natural selection at work. It's everywhere!